Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we are diving into a fascinating and powerful concept in C++, Type Erasure. If you've heard this term before and it sounded intimidating, don't worry. By the end of this video, you'll not only understand what it is, but also why it's so useful and where you've probably used it without even realizing. Let's get started. But what is type erasure? At its core, type erasure is a technique that lets us abstract away the concrete type of an object, while still being able to operate on it through a common interface. It lets us write code that is type agnostic while still type safe at runtime. But what does that mean? Imagine you want to write a function that takes anything that can be called like a function. In C++, this includes function pointers, functors, lambdas, etc. Without type erasure, you'd need to write a template. This works, but it's a template, which means it's instantiated per type at compile time. You can't easily pass callable objects around as a single unified type. That's where type erasure comes in. It allows you to wrap objects of different types in a common wrapper and treat them as though they are the same interface, even though they don't share a common base class. You've probably used std function before, like this. What happens here is type erasure in action. That lambda you passed has a completely anonymous type, but std function doesn't care. It erases the lambda's type and stores it internally in a type erased form. When you call f, it knows how to invoke the original object even though it no longer knows its exact type. This is powerful. You can now store different callables, function pointers, functors, lambdas, all under the same std function type. Now you might be thinking, why not just use templates for this? Well, templates are compile time polymorphism. They are great for performance and flexibility, but they come with some downsides. First off, code bloat. Each template instantiation generates a new version of the code. Second, inflexibility. You can store different types in the same container without a common interface. Third, no runtime polymorphism. You can't treat different template instances as the same type. Type erasure gives you runtime polymorphism, but without requiring inheritance or virtual functions. You can think of it like this. Traditional object-oriented programming in C++ gives you polymorphism through virtual functions. Type erasure gives you polymorphism through composition and delegation, not inheritance. Let's build a super minimal version of std function to really understand what's going on. We'll create a class that can hold any callable and we'll make it type erased. So we can call it later without knowing its original type. Here is a very simplified version. This is the classic type erasure pattern. We define a concept interface. Then we use a model that wraps a concrete type and implements the concept. Finally, we use dynamic polymorphism via virtual functions, but the caller only sees the interface. You can now do this. It works. We erase the lambda's type, but can still invoke it. So what got erased? What we erased is the concrete type of the callable. We replaced it with a pointer to a base class that exposes a uniform interface. The actual object is stored via a pointer to a subclass that knows the real type. So at runtime we are calling invoke through a virtual function. It knows which object to call, but not what it is. The user of callable wrapper doesn't need to know anything about the underlying type. That's the magic. You might be surprised just how many places in C++ use this idea. std function as we just saw. std any lets you store any type as long as it's copyable. A shared pointer of void type is a very crude form of erasure. There are also type erased iterators, in some libraries like Boost or even parts of the STL. Also, many modern C++ libraries use type erasure as a way to decouple interfaces from implementations, especially in plugin systems or runtime dispatched components. You might be thinking, isn't this just inheritance? In a way, yes, but the key difference is that with type erasure, the interface and the implementation are completely decoupled. With inheritance, the user's type has to derive from a common base. That means coupling your code to someone else's hierarchy. 
with type erasure, your type doesn't even need to know if the interface exists. You just wrap it externally. This enables non-intrusive polymorphism. You can apply polymorphic behavior to types that don't inherit from anything, even built-in types. There is a cost to this power, of course. First off, indirection. Calling through virtual function is slower than an inline call. Second, heap allocation. Because many type erased wrappers heap allocate their internal storage. Another cost is type safety. Once the type is erased, you lose the ability to access specific members unless you cast or have an interface. That said, for many use cases, especially when flexibility matters more than raw speed, this is a worthwhile trade-off. And modern implementations often optimize this heavily using small buffer optimization to avoid allocations for small objects, for example. Now with C++20 we have concepts. Concepts provide compile time constraints, while type erasure handles things at runtime. Think of concepts as enforcing requirements during compilation. Type erasure says, I don't care what the type is, as long as it fits this interface. Sometimes people even use both. Use concepts to restrict what can go into a type erased wrapper. Type erasure is foundational in writing flexible APIs. Think of event dispatch systems, command pattern implementations, callback registration systems, and plugin architectures. These often need to work with unknown types at runtime, and type erasure lets you do that in a clean, maintainable way. And unlike inheritance, you can avoid fragile base class problems, and even add interfaces after the fact without touching the original types. So to wrap this up, type erasure is an advanced but incredibly powerful technique in C++. It allows you to abstract over different types in a type safe uniform way and without knowing the type at compile time. You've seen it in std function, std any and custom wrappers. You've seen how it enables runtime polymorphism and the decoupled design. Is it always necessary? No. Templates are still your best friend when performance and compile time polymorphism work for you. But when you need runtime flexibility, or when you're dealing with unknown or mixed types, type erasure is your friend. Thanks for watching. If this helped clarify things for you, give the video a like, subscribe and check out the playlist on the screen. See you in the next one.